Thank you, Senator Paul. Um, I, I read an article in Forbes about your plan to propose a tax-free education act. Um, I love this. I was wondering what um, the plan is to garner support on both sides of the aisle and if there is going to be um, any removal of the uh, phase-out income requirement to take advantage of this program. Thank you. Uh, yes, on removing the phase out, we're going to let uh, people deduct the entire cost, not just of interest on your college education, but the whole loan. The other thing we do is a lot of people get out of college, and let's say you have $100,000 worth of loans, but you don't make $100,000 a year, you make $40,000 a year, we let you deduct it over time. So maybe somebody making $40,000 a year deducts $100,000 a year over many, many years, and they can deduct the whole cost. The way I look at uh, college is an expense and it's a business expense. Let's just make it like an ordinary business expense and you can deduct it. So if your parents pay for it, we let them deduct it as well. We don't have an income cap, so any parent could deduct it. If your aunt helps you, if your uncle helps you, if your grandmother helps you, all of them can, can use the deduction. And then uh, you can also, if you have savings, and your savings is there, you can actually use uh, savings from your IRA if you want to do it that way. But I think if we legalize this, what will happen is people currently who save for their kids save in after-tax money. Now they'll be able to save with pre-tax money. But that means your savings on college, college could be 25 to 33 to 40 percent cheaper depending on your tax bracket. So yeah, we get rid of the phase out so we don't limit who can do this. And I think everybody ought to make it tax deductible. As far as getting Democrats on board, we've tried. We don't have anybody so far. Right now they're feeling their oats and they think they can just make college free. The reason I oppose college being free is that everybody would go, it would be free, it would be overutilized and will incur much more debt. With my plan being tax deductible, it helps you, but you can't get a tax deduction unless you work. So essentially, making college tax deductible instills a work uh, requirement to get your benefit. So if you go to college and you don't work and you have no income, you don't get it to deduct anything. You have to be a worker to get deductions. So I think ours is a more realistic way of going. But right now, the Democrats are sort of hell-bent on just making everything free, which basically means you'll pay for it either through inflation, taxes, or ultimately maybe even the destruction of the dollar. So I think this is a more uh, prudent way to do it. We're gonna keep trying for Democrat co-sponsors, but we don't have any yet. All right, before we go to our next question, we have a very special guest here today, okay? So I'm not sure if anybody's heard of the Flat Stanley program, but Ms. Charlotte Bream from Pikeville Elementary School brought this friend here. She sent this to us and she asked if uh, we could take him on some adventures. And we figured what better way than to come to a live telephone town hall. Well, thank you, Charlotte. I wasn't sure if that was supposed to be me, but the hair's not messy enough to be me. So this must be Flat Stanley. We welcome him to D.C. And Charlotte, I'm going to be in Pikeville recently. Maybe we'll bring him back to you. All right. Thanks, Charlotte. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Newsom from Pikeville Elementary for um, putting this whole project together. We appreciate it. All right, we'll go ahead to our next question now. Uh, Mrs. Jill Smith, you are live with Senator Paul. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Senator Paul, I think the, <clears throat> probably the biggest threat to America is the bill they're trying to pass, Biden's bill, um, going to monitor our bank transactions, which is a violation of the Fourth Amendment, it's going to tax our mileage, with, which will destroy the economy and, and destroy everybody's ability to do anything. Uh, why aren't the Republicans doing something about this? Yeah. This, this is fundamental. Something's got to be done. It's got to be stopped. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I will tell you that I believe Republicans are united in opposing this. There won't be one Republican vote to allow the government to look at your bank account and your transactions. We are, we are united in opposing this. So we have been speaking out. Sometimes the media doesn't carry our message, so we might not have gotten it through to everybody yet, but we continue to fight this. I've heard more phone calls and more letters and more emails on this subject than anything else in a long time. The Democrat proposal was that if you have more than six hundred dollars going through your account in a year they were going to audit you and look at all of your transactions well there was an outcry and so now they've changed it to ten thousand 
but realize $27 a day is $10,000. And if you earn more than $10,000 a year, in all likelihood, more than $10,000 goes through your bank account in a year. When we looked at the statistics on this, 75% of the people that are going to be looking at their accounts will make less than $100,000 a year. So this gives lie to Biden saying, oh, we're only going to go after people who make $400,000 a year. This proposal to snoop on your bank account, 75% of the people's bank accounts that they're going to look at make less than $100,000 a year. And you're right, this does go against the Fourth Amendment. This is an unreasonable search without a warrant. You look at all the checks a person writes, you're looking at very personal activities, you're looking at who their doctor is, who their church is, you're looking at a lot of different activities that people engage in, what kind of material they read. So I'm absolutely opposed to this. We are fighting tooth and nail on it. And the more you write and call legislators, the better chance we have. Your two senators are opposed to this provision in Kentucky. Um, the one that I would really write and who has a lot of influence right now is Senator Manchin from West Virginia. So people should send him letters saying you don't want them looking at your bank account because in the end he's probably going to vote for the final proposal, but he does have some influence over what goes in the final proposal. And if we can convince him that it's a bad idea, maybe we'll dodge this bullet. But I'm with you.